and you're still here. <laughs> uh, well, we're glad you stuck around a little bit longer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess we're going to stay here. <laughs> I've lost control of the class. <laughs> Down. One, two. Better? Okay. Kathy, good to see you too. Okay, let's just start with the song. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways and step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me, and I will love you all of my days. Oh, and it goes again. And I follow you all of my day, and I will follow you all of my day, and step by step you'll lead me, O oh Lord, and I will follow you all of my days. That's the end. <laughs> Prayer requests tonight before we start tonight's class. Prayer requests. Oh, they're in Iowa. They made boy, they made it a long ways in two days. Gee. Wow. Wow. Pray for their safe trip. Oh great. So Mike is leaving on Friday, be in Georgia by Monday. Wow. Wow. How long will you be gone? July. Oh. <laughs> and we see um, Russ is here tonight glad you could make it out I know sometimes it's hard for you to get out appreciate you coming oh so yeah it hasn't really hit you yet yep and Joseph is feeling better yeah, all right any other prayer requests tonight and we'll be praying for Joe and Kathy when they head back on Saturday they're here because their house is in escrow. Yay! <laughs> oh, well. As they say, all good things must come to an end, huh? <laughs> uh, but we're glad you came up today. Yes. You bow with me as you begin to God and go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we're so grateful for all that you do. We just look around us every day, and we just see the blessings that you bestow upon us. For you are a great and mighty God, and we just bow down to you. We give respect to you and honor, because there is no other God but you. We worship you with all of our heart. Help us to do that, Father. Sometimes we, our minds are elsewhere, and we don't give you the true praise and honor. Be with us as we enter to this class and watch over us. Be with um, Micah, as he'll be leaving on Friday, watch over him and on his long trip down there. Also, we pray that you'd be with the Johnsons who are in traveling to Tennessee. Be with them on their trip there and give them a safe trip back. And we pray that you'd be with 
Kathy and Joe as they return on Saturday too. Father, we pray that you be with Russ as he's uh, continuing to go through treatments. And I know that he doesn't feel good most days, but I thank him for being here tonight, his brother, showing interest to um, be with us and to worship with us and to learn more about you. Father, be with each one of us that we can lead a light that shines brightly for those around us. And this I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Okay. Uh, Weston, would you like to read our scripture reading tonight? Yeah, there's two slides, so give the next uh, the microphone to the next person. My soul clefts to the dust. Receive me according to your word. I have told of my ways, and you have answered me. Teach me your statues. Make me understanding the way, understand the way of your precepts. Precepts. So I will m- meditate on your wonders. My soul weeps because of grief. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove the false way from me, and graciously grant me your law. I have chosen the faithful way. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Do not put me to shame. I shall run the way of your commandments, for you will enlarge my heart. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall observe it to the end. Give me understanding that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies, and not to dishonest gain. Turn away my eyes from looking at vanity, and revive me in your ways. Establish your word to your servant, as that which produces reverence for you. Isn't that amazing? What a great, you know, David, I just admire him and his ability to bring words and thoughts together. And I know that God was helping him in all that, but boy, it just... I just, I wish I had that much ability of what he was able to put in thought and words. It's just amazing when you think about how he puts there. But the reason I put that slide in there, these that we're doing our scripture reading, we're going to go through 119 um, as we do the class, is to kind of get us in that mindset of mindset of what David did when he approached God and how he had a conversation with God. And then you can see how much honor and respect he had for God as he approached him in his conversations and as he just was explaining to him why lord help me get through this i need you sometimes we do not do that i think a large part of our prayers are basically focused on be with so and so who is sick be with us as we travel and sometimes we forget about the big picture guy that's god and how wonderful god is russ you were going to say something Yeah, and, that, and basically all of um, 119 has that rhythm going through it and the way that um, David did it. So we're going to do a little review for last week for those that were not here. We had a real small group last Wednesday night, so it's good to have um, a real little review. And basically we were setting the stage for defining what worship was, and we're going to be spending some time in the next week or two doing that. And they all, we also had a little bit of homework assignment and uh, I have lesson one from last week, if you don't have that. And then I have lesson two and a handout that I did. So I apologize as you read through it. I was just telling Joe, I said, there's probably typos and some miswords, my English. You know, I went to school for an engineer, not to be an English major. <laughs> and thank goodness for Microsoft Office that has the ability to correct some of my grammar. <laughs> I think. Yeah, that was a long time. So um, forgive me if there's stuff that doesn't um, fit really well in there. I tried to do my best. So reviewing, uh, we're trying to understand what, what really worship is and what God wants us to do in worship and how we are to approach God. The Bible uses three different words for worship. Crescuno, which means what from last week? To bow down, to kiss the hand of a king or royalty or adoration. Sabonai. Not even close. Sabome. <laughs> An attitude of reverence to gods. In the New Testament, it's, res- it's respect to deity. And then the f- third one is latrino. Close. close. I'm getting closer. 
to serve one who is in authority. And in the New Testament, it is normally used for work for wages. That's how that term is used. And so if you go through the Old Testament to the New Testament, you'll find several um, renditions of the word worship. Well, this is the three different kinds of meanings of worship as you go through the Bible and as you go through from the old to the new. The new mainly talks about uh, Sebani and Lusprio being those two there are the two that kind of the New Testament fits toward. The first one is more what the Old Testament does, but there are some um, instances of that same word being used in the New Testament. So are we worshiping today in this manner? It's looking at those three definitions of worship that you see up there, are we truly worshiping God as you see it up there? That's my first question. Why or basically why not? As you come, as you worship God. And we don't have to worship in a building, right? We're not worshiping God only in a building. We can worship in, in other locations and with other hearts. Because we did the example last week of Abraham taking his son Isaac up to the Mount Moriah. And as he, before he got up there, they stopped and they basically worshiped God. And we know that they didn't probably have hymns when they were doing that. And they probably didn't. Um, have a, a lesson, and they probably didn't, we know for sure they didn't take up the Lord's Supper. Those those acts, all those are acts of worship. And sometimes we get the con connection of what the difference between what worship is by those three definitions to what acts of worship is. People say, well, what's worship? Well, it's the five things that we do every Sunday. Well, those are acts of worship. What do I do? Those are acts of worship. So, Answer that question. Give me some input. Are we worshiping today in this manner, of, as you see it up there? And so, go ahead, Joe. And maybe it's a mental attitude of bowing down today. I think a lot of that could be that. I think, a, I think another side of the, the worship is that we have ideas that God's always up there, right? But we have scripture that says he's around us all the time. He's with us. In fact, he knows our thoughts, every one of our thoughts, before we even say them. He, he says, I know what you're thinking. I know what you, before you were even formed, I know who you were to be, it says it in Psalms. Yeah, they were bowing to the king. That's what that first one was all about, meaning to bow. And why would you bow to a king or a person of high rank or a person of nobility? Why would you bow to them? That's right. Subordinate. That's true. If you didn't do that, if you didn't bow correctly. If it wasn't a respectful thing. It's a humbleness. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about the fourth denial. I believe that's the word that was used when she was announcing she was going to conceive. Mm -hmm. She recognized him as the king. As the savior. Yeah. That's an added thing to worship at that point. Mm -hmm. And that's why I thought it was good to go through this review of what worship is. Because we come here 
on Sundays, and I'm guilty as the next person, that sometimes I'm more focused on the mechanics than I am on my thought and my attitude. I don't know about you, but I'm more uh, worried about the mechanics, just like worrying about the, the mic and worrying about the slides and worrying about how many are here and counting the treasury and what all that kind of stuff versus am I really here with a mindset of worshiping the God Almighty that has given me so much this day? What Russ said was making sure that sometimes we're so worried that we didn't get done on time. It's 12 o'clock and we need to get out of here <laughs> and not a realizing hope. Oh, we're really here to worship God, not to worship ourselves. Because when we're so constrained about the time element, we're kind of losing sight of what, what we're really here for. Mm -hmm. We have an example in Acts 20 and 7 that basically says they worship through the night. <laughs> yeah, it'd be kind of almost like falling out these windows, huh? <laughs> so, Timothy, tell me what your dad says about how long they worship on a Sunday in Africa. And they walk for miles, don't they? I mean, 10 to 20 miles to get to church that day or to the assembly. I mean, that's amazing. That, and then that's why they spend most of the day there. They says, man, we put all this effort to get here to see our brothers and sisters in Christ and to have worship and praise and have this adoration for God. And they don't want to stop. I mean, they said we put a lot of um, pain and sweat <laughs> to come here and uh, be here. So names the types of actions that can be considered worship. Prayer, singing. There's three. Yeah, what are, give me some action or actions of worship. The Lord's Supper. It used to be in the 50s, and in that era, uh, Diana, I'll tell on him, her, her grandpa would always get down on one knee when he would have a prayer in the congregation, and he would actually pray down on a knee in prayer, and, and most of the men would do that in the 50s. Now we rarely see someone actually bowing down on one knee and showing respect in that manner. And those that are in the military, like you, Micah, I'm trying to figure out why would, why would that be so important for an individual to take that stance, that physical stance of getting down on one knee? What would that symbolize to you if you had to do that in the military? For someone to actually get down. And respecting them. Humility. Humility. I'm, 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 a pe I'm not a, as powerful as you are. I'm a kind of a peon compared to you. Yeah. Right. That's right. So how can we promote having an attitude of worship? Oh, Joe? I was going to say, too, it was going to be act, too. It doesn't necessarily mean that worship means that you're going through the motions. You have to have the attitude of heart that it is a sincere worship and worship of God. For those that didn't hear what he said, he basically, you can do the acts and not even have your heart into it. Mm -hmm. And it's not even, and God will tell us as we get into the next lesson, number two, he warns about people that do that, that do that type of, that vain type of worship. So. It's a constant battle. Mm -hmm. It is a battle. It is a battle because we're human and our minds wander and we have the tendency of getting into rituals and repetitive actions and we kind of forget about why we're actually doing what we're doing. And it's very possible to just go through the motion. And I think, I believe that's what Jesus had to confront when he was there with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were going through more of the mechanics 
and showing I got all these phylacteries, I got my box of scripture on my on my head, all those type of things, and it was more a visible. Look how good how good I am at worshiping God, and I'm such a child of God. When they let, missed the whole point of what that is, because I didn't see Moses doing any of that, and I haven't seen other people of the Bible that were mighty and thought and words that did those kind of actions. Wanda. And what did the people do when they recognized he was the son of God? They would bow to him. I mean, it's, that was pretty clear to me. Every time you see Jesus, you could tell that he, they recognized. Even the spirits would holler out, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Because they recognized him being who, they, who he was. And I just think we sometimes forget about that side of worship. Very good. Julie? I think especially in Western culture. Well, I, 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 you know, one thing, Julia, when I did the Revelations one, and as you read through Revelations, you see the elders bowing down, the 24 elders. You see the angels bowing down to God. You see all these people giving God glory in heaven. You, we, we should probably think about what we should be doing when we get to heaven. Maybe we should have that same <laughs> thought and process. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. So Colette and... Uh, And here's from last week. Who else, else wasn't here last week? Oh, you did. So we're going to go through a couple of slides and try to answer these questions. Um, do we really understand worship? Anybody else need one? Oh, Russ, did you get? Thank you, Wanda. Okay, so let's look at, um, if you did your homework and all these verses, what was the main thought in the verses listed, if you look at that? <laughs> Bowing and reverence, we, kind of what we've been talking about. Every one of those from the Old Testament to the New Testament is all bowing and rev reverence to God. So when God's people, when, when it's God's people, they worshiped. They lowered themselves and bowed down and paid respect to God. I think if you looked at each one of those verses, you'll see that that was kind of the whole thing. They're God's people, and they give God the respect that he really deserves. So looking at those verses then on the next page, and that's why I gave the homework to those that were here last week, what was our attitude should be? Again, the Lord is to be treated as holy, respected, and to be feared. Feared, what is it? If it's feared, what is that fear like? Are we so supposed to tremble? We're in awe. We're in awe. That's right. There's, 
we realize that he can, he, he could snap his fingers or whatever he has and it put an end to it, as we found out and many times in the Old Testament. If you didn't do what he wanted to do, that was it. Um, and, there's, uh, and even we found that in the New Testament with Ananias and Sapphira. I mean, it only took a second and they were put to death in that regard. So all I'm trying to do is kind of reset your brain to kind of thinking about, and it's not in here, but we do worship a lot of places and a lot of times. Maybe first thing in the morning when you wake up, you uh, say a prayer to God. Thank you, Lord, for another good day that you've blessed me with. Thank you for the love you've provided for me. I'm ready to start the day. Thank you, God. Or when I know that you've been like me. I've been driving down the road and start a prayer. And I'm praying to God as I'm praying down there with a, either a difficulty or to help me to face a future thing. And I know definitely, Russ, as you're going through these treatments of yours and cancer, I know you're praying a lot. And so I wanted us to kind of get away from the thought that this is the place we do worship. We do worship a lot of different times of in our lives. And not everything we do is worship. I mean, I, we're going to get to that point. Not everything we do is worship because uh, a lot of things, like when I'm cutting firewood, I'm not really thinking about worshiping God. I'm working hard providing for that. And so not everything we do in that instance is worshiping God. And that's what I wanted to point to. Any thoughts on that, on this, these scriptures here, when you were reading through it in your homework assignment? That's right. If we're following God's word, in fact, as we were looking through those Psalms, the, the first one that was written, um, read by um, Weston, it was all about, help me to follow your statutes and your commandments, Lord. Help me to do what I'm supposed to be doing as your servant. I really like that in the Psalm 119 that we were reading this morning or this afternoon. Okay, worshipers of other religions bow down and get there on their knees. Does God expect us to bow down and get on our knees today at all? Kind of open discussion. Does he expect us? Occasionally, I, I will bow and get on my knees, but it's in private that I do that. But I'm just wondering, oops, it went by. I think they are too. So I, th I, we may not bow on our knees every time, but our hearts and our minds better be in full respect and honor of the mighty God. I, I think that's where I, I want us to go in, the, in that thought. It, it, you better have a, a, a very um, intent, full heart on what you're doing at that point. Diana, then to Russ. Well, I had a problem with Acts 10.25. Okay. That's I'm right. Like you. Yeah. So no, we do not get down and bow to men. To preacher or to men, but it all depends on where you're at if it's appropriate to bow. Is what we have to look at in our hearts and doing it. Are you just doing your bowing to be seen by those around you, or are you bowing because you're in reverence to God and you're doing it in your heart? If I did it out there in public, that would be to show me and make me a spectacle and not really give him glory to God. And I would suspect that if I did that on Sunday morning and led a prayer up front and got on my knees, I think I would. a lot of heads would go, whoa, what's he doing? Don't you think? I think it would also make me feel less. It would, it would bring me into that moment of being in reverence and, you know, mentally prostrate. And I don't mean to stay on this too long, but I, it's just like, I think back in the 50s, that thing keeps on jumping forward. Back in the 50s, I mean, when her grandpa was doing that, and it was quite common for men to do that uh, to, during the service. The Jews used to have the kneeling right. board, the palms, mm -hmm. if you will. 
and various religions, I mean, other denominations have those still today. But for, for some reason, we've got away from that, which is, I think, kind of wrong in my mind. If, if we're the part where we were saying it should be, it seemed like you could naturally walk fall down. We already knew. The next about step is like, I saw her feet. Yeah. It's kind of like when you get up in the morning and you never comb your hair and you've never put on your clothes, your good work clothes, and you just kind of walk around all day. You're not in the right mindset of doing today's activities. I mean, you f don't feel right. And it's kind of the same way when you're not giving God respect and mentally or physically going through these actions. You really don't know what God wants you to do. Go ahead, Joe. You fell down on your knees and you were giving a heartfelt prayer, tearful prayer, and sincere prayer. I would have done that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just did it because you know, I felt like I needed to say it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah, and so now, now you're at a conundrum. Conundrum? Is that the right word? <laughs> conundrum. So if someone did that, you'd say, oh no, now I got to do like Tom did it. Yeah. Wouldn't, I mean, yeah. wouldn't that be kind of the reaction? Could be. Good, good, good thought, Russ. Appreciate that. Hmm. Now I got a hand there. All right, so let's move on to the next. We're going to move. I can just. So, what kind of worship there are? There's vain worship. Jesus warned about that in his um, discussions in Matthew. There's worship in ignorance. People worship in ignorance and don't know. We found that when they went to Mars Hill and Paul said, these people are worshiping in, in ignorance. There is only one true God. And we worship in spirit and truth. What is the spirit and truth? If someone was to ask you today, what's it mean to worship spirit and truth? Because it says that in John 4, 24. What is spirit and truth? I think we just talked about the spirit language. What is that? Things that you've been saying, like worship. So it's... Right, falling into God's word in that regard. And the spirit side, as a song leader, I notice that when we're doing songs, and, and any song leader that gets up here, you can recognize those that have the thought of what the song is. And some people are crying as they're singing the song. Some people are really enthused as they're singing the song. And others are just staring at the ceiling and not wanting to do that. And so you can see the different kinds of um, attitudes to that act of worship is seen. And I think God definitely sees that, and we need to be careful about that reaction that we have for how, how am I really presenting myself? So how do you get that stuff out of your head that's clouding your mind and keeping you away from proper worship? <laughs> or how do you get it away? I mean, how do we get that back? to do spirit and truth. We often look at what comes to a conscious person to set aside the things of the world and the things of the Holy Spirit. And it's purposely, on purpose, intentionally, bring your mind to that. Otherwise, you just be thinking about it like you're doing. So Colette said, and I'm doing this mainly for the people that are watching on the video, basically, you got to have a, a set portion in your mind. You've got to prepare for worship, I think you really got to go into it as pre preparation and, and realize, okay, I'm consciously approaching the God Almighty. Russ? And it, and it certainly is that always remember who, who we are with. Uh, he, yes, he's our Lord and Savior, but he's also your best friend. He, he, he loves you. He's, just, he's not trying to find fault with you. He's just, and so you can be open. Good point. That I like that. You know, don't always 
we shouldn't have the, the fear or the um, subservient attitude that he is up away from far away from us and is so powerful that he doesn't want to hear from us. He's very in tune to our lives. Very in tune to our lives. He's on our mind. Yeah. He's right here with us. Mm-hmm. And to that point, as it relates to worship, uh, we often point out the truth about singing, but we don't have the sound clearly as much. That's right. We're presenting worship to God. That can be the same as prayer, though, or anything else we do in worship, I think. Uh, it doesn't have to be pretty because we're bringing it to God, and if we bring it to him with all our heart, then we can love it. That's right. If we've done it correctly. We say that all the time, but we focus on the mechanics a lot more than we do on the person's hearts that say in the prayer. Uh, good point, Wesley. I really like that. So was the Bible written to us to tell us about how to worship or to how to worship, I should say? Tell us, is the Bible written to tell to worship or is it how to worship, do you think? Or both? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get into Jeroboam and talk a little bit about him, and that's where I have the mic for the, the guys and also for um, Brenton over there to read. He's going to, our focus will be on attitudes and worship in spirit and truth as we go through Jeroboam. We are under the new covenant, correct? And um, in the Old Testament is for our learning in Romans 15 and 4. The first recorded worship was in Genesis 4, 3 through 7. What do you think that was? Genesis 4, 3 through 7. What do you think the first act of worship was? Cain and Abel. What were they doing? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever wondered how, how they knew it, it was proper to offer a sacrifice when there haven't been any um, Old Testament commandments or statutes laid out by God? Do you, remember, do you wonder how they knew that? God communicated them. And I think it's when everybody's soul, I think there is a desire in First Roman, Romans 1, basically, basically to man has a desire to worship me. If you look at things around you in the world, there are so many religions and so many things that people worship. I mean, just think about those. Those in the Middle East, those in the Far East, they're all worshiping something. There's something God has created within this soul of ours that wants to worship something. And so... <laughs> sometimes during the year. <laughs> but... Good point, Scott. So it was a worship of the two brothers, Cain and Abel, and, and, and we found out that Cain's worship, or what he did, was unacceptable to God in Hebrews 11 and 4. You need to look, check those out. And by the way, check me out on everything. I don't mind you asking me, hey, I don't think you're right on that. It doesn't hurt my feelings one bit to challenge or to say, I think you might have got it wrong because I'd rather get it right because it says teachers face a greater judgment than those that are the students listening. So I would rather get it right and you help me get it right rather than be on the other side. So uh, so lessons in unacceptable worship. Another one that I came up with is Nadab and Abihu. Tell me the story of those two guys. Wrong, strange fire, wrong fire, strange fire. And it was their thought of this will make it better, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why they did it. They, they did something they thought. Well, hey, this, this, will, this, will do this will do. Yeah. Uh, this will do. Um, Ron sometimes called the, the sin of presumptuousness. Oh, the sin of presumptuous. As Ron will sometimes put it, because uh, they just sort of assumed that they could improve on God, God's plan, which was not the case. Which yeah. then proved to them the hard way. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So definitely when a man thinks he's got a good idea of how to improve things, and especially in worship, he's going to find out he doesn't know it all, and he's probably going to do it wrong. <laughs> Wanda, what was that? Genetically modified. <laughs> GMO <laughs> for worship. Okay, Russ. Solomon made his temple, he made it 
much, much more glorious than that. But, but God wants you to just simply worship him as he says to you, not add to it. Or God was happy with the, t with the tent. It was man that wanted the building or the temple. I mean, really think about that. He was happy with that structure. He says, I'm around you. I don't need the, a big, fantastic temple. But he allowed man to build that temple. But he sets us to want it with our hearts. Our hearts are his temple. That's right. The temple he wants is our hearts. Good point. And they were worship leaders, these two guys. That's what I was wanted to point out. These guys were Levites. They were second in command to the high priests. I mean, these weren't just your average Joes that were part of the Israelites out there in the wilderness. These guys were second in command in my mind. And, and we need to keep this in mind. Sometimes you need to really challenge your leaders, me and whoever may be up here, the mans that are talking. You know, make sure that doesn't seem right, Tom. You know, that doesn't seem like what God wants us to do. Put a, put a stop to it. I mean, everybody has that voice to keep us in line. And you'll probably be showing your brother your best example of love to do that. Before. That's right. You'll show your brother how much you're loving by telling that. Scott? Uh, with me being an Abijah, I know sometimes that's a possibility for the prophet to approve. But I don't see that in the scripture. It seems to me more like they thought this will do. Hmm. It, it, the lack of reverence for the old particularly wise took it just to drop to them and said, This is how you do it. That's good enough right there. But it seems to me like maybe it's a similar to Cain that, you know, it's, it's okay, it'll do. Only God will be able to do this. Mm -hmm. And that's the same struggle we have and have had apparently for yep. all those years. Not giving God the do and respect that he actually deserves. Yep. I agree. Any other thoughts to that about Mm. They um, feel that ego being built up, and they want to like they like that feeling. Yeah, Joe. You only make those who stand with blessing, but uh, add the insolent to the shame of the blessing. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly where I was kind of heading for us to think about is those that would like to add instrumental music, when there is no indication that the New Testament there is instrumental music in the worship. I mean, it was definitely approved of in the Old Testament. But as we've been learning on Sunday morning, the old covenant was done away with when the new came. And the new covenant doesn't have anything about that aspect. And I found that in our Christian churches, even you can see it, but people perform and people out there as an audience, they're not, they're not worshiping together, really. They're persuading each other to worship. Okay, this next one I wanted to do is in um, Isaiah and Micah. And Quentin, could you read the, in Isaiah chapter 1, 11 through 18 for me up there? I mean, I, I didn't put the scripture up there, but in your Bible. And then the next one is Micah 6, 6 through 8, if someone wants to pick that up. What are your multiplied sacrifices to me, says the Lord? I have enough of, I have enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed cattle. I take no pleasure in the blood of bulls, lambs, or goats. When you come to appear before me, who requires of you this trampling of my courts? Bring your worthless offerings no longer. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon 
and Sabbath the calling of assemblies. I cannot endure iniquity and solemn assembly. I hate your new moon festivals and your appointed festivals. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. So when you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Yes, even though you multiply even though you multiply prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are covered with blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove, your, remove the evil of your deeds from my sight. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Reprove the ruthless. Defend the orphan. Plead the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they will be like wool. Okay. And then we'll read Micah 6. And I would like your interpretation of how worship can be wrong. <laughs> Micah 6, 6 through 8. With what shall I come to the Lord and bow myself before the God on high? Shall I come to him with burnt offerings, with yearling calves? Does the Lord take delight in thousands of rams? in 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I present my firstborn for my rebellious acts, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? And actually, I might add Matthew 9, 13, because I was just looking at this. Sure. Jesus tells his, uh, his disciples, no, actually, these were Pharisees. He says, but go and learn what this means. I desire compassion and not sacrifice. So what's that tell us in today's worship? That we can do the best service in the way of song service and a prayer service and everything. And if we aren't doing it properly with the proper heart, I think that's what's missing. We were kind of hitting that a minute ago about the heart side. If we're not doing that, God says, it's worthless to me. It's worthless. That's the key of all the ways to God. You always have been in God and you know that God has been the Lord. Yeah. So, so I, I like this study. I think it really kind of gets you back center to focus to what we, you need to be doing with our lives. And uh, we're going to be uh, going more into this. So here's what I said. The heart, the heart of the problem was their heart. They focused on their rituals, and, and they were devoid of worshiping their worshiping attitude. They had a worship lacking any spirit, as we were talking earlier, the spirit side. So we're going to run out of time, so we're going to pick this up next week. And if you have a chance, and I'm going to give you a, a handout for number lesson two, and it has uh, the scripture we're going to be reading, but it's in 1 Kings, and I'll go ahead and pull it up. 1 Kings 11. And we're going to read through chapter 11, basically, a little bit of 11, and into 12. And you'll see how a guy thought, I have a better idea. I can make this worship better. And uh, it's a part of the divided kingdom. And we'll learn a whole lot from that. So uh, we're going to stop there for this evening because we've got five to the hour. But I think you'll enjoy the next side of this, of this worship of uh, the origin of um, sinful worship. We're going to find out what is that origin in that regard. And I'll leave these handouts up here for Lesson 2 and for the worksheet that goes along with Lesson 2. And we'll just jump into that after the singing next week because we have the singing next week. So we'll pick that up after the singing. So anything else on worship as we get ready to close tonight? That was excellent. Mm -hmm. I do. That last part of Micah is a pretty powerful um, verse. All right. So we're going to go ahead and um, finish for today. And um, anything, announcements? We have game night this Friday at 6 o'clock. And what are we going to be doing, Wanda? Charade, Bible charades, right? Oh, that'll be good.
And we'll be praying for um, Micah when he takes off on Friday. You're probably leaving on Friday morning. Traffic's a lot lighter then. My first stop's 15 hours away, so I want to get there earlier in the day. Well, we're praying for you. All right. Joe, we miss your prayers and everything. Would you mind doing our um, closing prayer for tonight? Father in heaven, humbly bow before you, Lord. Uh, we're very thankful for your word. Uh, thankful for this class, Lord, that we can look into these things and, and learn about worship and the attitude of heart that we should be approaching you with. And Lord, uh, 